Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We have a great show for you today. I am your host, Tommy Brzee. As always, it is April 10th, a Wednesday, and let's jump right into what we have planned for today. We're going to start talking a little bit about the transfer portal. There have been a couple of people around the country who are big-time players who have made their intentions known that they will be entering the transfer portal. I've talked a little bit about how crazy I think this is going to be, um, but I thought I'd break it down a little bit more for you all and give you some of the names that are currently in the portal, even though plenty more will be joining them very, very soon. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about Caleb Williams. There's been a ton of criticism uh, around him the last couple of really months as we lead up into the NFL draft, so I wanted to break down kind of my thoughts on all of that. Is it fair? Is it not? Um, Then we'll get a little bit of a recruiting update for you all, tons of commitments and stuff happening over the weekend, tons of big time visits uh, happening with spring games all over the country, and then we'll finish up with another Spotlight Wednesday and talk about the Tennessee Volunteers. Obviously, a ton riding on this season, very exciting season for them, so we will break down that. Um, But before we jump in, I do want to remind you all, we get tons of questions and comments throughout the show, and the best way for you all to get your question on the screen is to use the tip and donation link at the bottom of the screen, gsmcpodcast.net. It's a huge help not only to us here at the network, but to you all. You get to watch the show, uh, maybe leave a comment or a question, see it on the screen. I'll read it out, and maybe uh, we can have a fun back and forth here. But again, that's gsmcpodcast.net if you want to do any of that. But let's jump right in. Um, The transfer portal has been insane. Um, It's been crazy for quite some time. I've talked a little bit about how this upcoming cycle from April 15th to the 30th I think could be the craziest of the bunch, and that is not being subsided at all as we get closer to this. I was watching uh, Josh Pate earlier this week. He seems very, very confident that this is going to be off the charts insane, Um, and I think that's something that a lot of people have the same sentiment of, whether it's behind the scenes and not in front of the camera or um, other people on other shows talking about it. It feels like everyone is preparing for essentially the worst in some of these uh, circumstances. So we've talked about it a little bit, and uh, one of the things that I've been doing throughout this time is a Spotlight Wednesday, which we'll have at the end of the show today, Um, just kind of breaking down teams and rosters and their coaches. And the only thing that I uh, feel super confident in when I do this stuff is the coaching staff, because it's very unlikely, unless there's some crazy change at this point in time, that you will lose a coach uh, at this point, but you're going to lose players, uh, and pretty much everyone is going to lose players uh, probably this time next week, uh, to be totally honest with you. There will be some players walking out of your program, so it's going to be crazy, Um, and there's that worry where I I put out a couple of these um, Spotlight Wednesdays hoping that those teams don't get gutted too, too bad, but It could happen to any team in the country. So if that does happen, I will redo that one and we'll uh, kind of reassess where they're at. But um, as we've kind of talked about, um, Josh Pate has been someone that I listen to a lot just because uh, he's someone in the industry I um, have a lot of respect for and think uh, does the job very, very well. But he's been talking about this for quite some time. I've told the story on here a couple of times, but uh, I think it's worth telling again just because of how insane it is. But um. He was talking on his show uh, probably about uh, two weeks ago or so uh, about a conversation he had had with someone that's very plugged into a certain university. He didn't give names, obviously. He didn't tell the university, obviously, um, because then no one's talking to him for quite some time. But uh, he dis- he went on to say, essentially, that this person knew that there was an entire position room within their team that was going to be out the door. Now, they were on the roster for the time being, but they knew for a fact that they were finding their uh, way to another university uh, starting next week. So that's crazy in and of itself. The fact that a player has made up their mind and not made that known is still going through practices with a team that they have no intention of hanging out with uh, beyond you know next Monday. Uh, is already a very, very weird concept. But the weirder part of it is this person also said uh, they know exactly who they're going to replace all these kids with. They know who they're going to go after from specific universities to replace um, everyone that's going to be walking out the door. That's even crazier. The idea that um, an entire staff uh, knows pretty much exactly their plan of attack for kids who are already on other rosters 
um, for when this happens. Uh, they already know who they're going to go after, how those conversations are going to go. Some ways they already know they have that kid locked up. Um, so obviously a crazy situation. Um, Josh Pate has doubled down a number of times on his show talking about just how crazy this cycle is going to be and with how well plugged in he's going to be, or he is in real time, I think, I'm willing to believe him on that. I, I think it's going to be off the charts. I think uh, he did say also there are some teams that feel very good right now that won't feel very good in two weeks. He said there are some teams that aren't title contenders that will find themselves in title contention after two weeks. So there will be teams that you know really benefit from this. There will be teams that get gutted from this. And it's probably going to be the teams that you expect, right? Um, it's usually the teams up top are the teams that benefit the most or at least are hit the uh, the least by these type of things and then it's the teams that you expect to get uh, gutted that will get gutted uh, the teams that are a little bit lower on the totem pole as the totem pole becomes even more clear in college football but um, just to give you an idea of guys who have already made their intentions known obviously this is going to be a list that continues to rise even over the next couple of days as this week goes on and more of those one-on-one -on -one conversations start to happen between coaches and players but um just to give you an idea of where we sit today before everything goes crazy um I'll give you a couple of names here Caden Proctor we've talked about a couple of times on here he's almost definitely making his way back to Tuscaloosa it sounds like the little sojourn he took in uh Iowa City did not go as well as he had planned He's probably going back to Tuscaloosa and will be um, on Bama's roster, will likely be a starter for them in the fall. Um, that has gotten a lot of publicity, so I don't think that that's necessarily one that will surprise anyone. One that came out yesterday was Damian Martinez, a very talented and tough running running back um, that will be a plug-and-play at many schools around the country. Uh, I think the, the main one that I circled at least early on in this process was LSU. I think there's someone that could definitely use a little bit of help in that running back room, and Damian Martinez would absolutely start for that team, or at least get major, major carries as they kind of rotate different guys in and out. Now, it's not a bad room necessarily at LSU, but they could use that top-end talent at that running back position. So I would expect LSU to be in on it. I think Kentucky's another team. Chip Trainum and uh, Dumo Sum uh, Sumo Caring Bay are a good duo, but definitely adding someone else to that mix would help a lot. And then Ole Miss. Um, they have U uh, Ulysses Bentley, but um, could definitely use a little bit more help there. I think they're getting um, the backup from Miami. I could not remember his name for the life of me, but um, it looks like they might be getting reinforcements there anyway uh, with a another person uh, coming on over. So maybe they're not as interested as the other two, but I think LSU is someone definitely to watch in that uh, recruitment. Another one that will likely be the topic of conversation early on in this transfer portal cycle is Bear Alexander. He's someone that uh, went into the portal, or at least made his intentions known yesterday. Um, he's remarkably talented. Uh, there's no two ways about that. This is a guy that could absolutely play on Sundays. But there's going to be qu some questions that he's going to have to answer before a team you know, gives him a committable offer um, because... I don't know if you know much about Bear Alexander's history, but he is someone who, since his freshman year in high school, has been in a different school every single year. So he's been at six schools in six different years and is on the way to do a seventh in year seven. So um, that obviously is not necessarily that something that NFL scouts or that uh, college football coaches are looking for from their guy. You know, they want someone that's going to stay put. Now, it sounds like Bear Alexander... Um, is trying to go kind of closer to home, trying to kind of get back to his roots. He is from uh, Texas, kind of the Dallas area, so I think UT will be involved big time. I think A&M will definitely give him a call. Tons of teams will be giving this kid a call. It's just the question of once he gets on campus, is he solid or is there still question marks around um, is he going to be finding another place to play in year eight? But at the end of the day, this is a very talented kid. I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt, and hopefully he can kind of find a place where he can thrive and show off his remarkable athletic ability because he's definitely someone that could be a Sunday-type player um, for many, many years as long as he can kind of, um, you know, just kind of get a little bit better head on his shoulders and, and you know, focus a little bit more um, on football and, and, and staying consistent, I suppose, is the best way to put it. But 
Uh, let's move on to another big-time defensive lineman, an edge rusher out of Miami, Nigel at Kelly is someone that is going to be very interesting. I think there's kind of a depth uh, chart casualty, to be totally honest. Ruben Bain is a young player that I've talked about a couple of times on here. He's a freshman going in, or going into his sophomore year now. Um, and I just think Nigel I. Kelly was going to have a hard time finding the field with some of the younger guys they have on there and Ruben Bain. Um, now, he would have played, but it would have been more of a rotational piece. Um, he's someone that definitely can play big time snaps for some other teams that might need a little bit of edge rushing so there will be plenty of a market for this kid he's very talented 6'6 six, six, so 10 but plenty of length can do a ton of really really good things so I think he's someone that um, might not necessarily pop off the page but will definitely be a good rotational piece for whatever team ends up picking him up um, Dallin Hayden a running back out of Ohio State another depth chart uh, casualty that I think a lot of people expected, to be totally honest. He stayed through spring, tried to kind of like battle it out um, in this running back room, see where he landed. It seems like he's landing towards the end. Uh, Quinshawn Judkins and Travion Henderson are going to hold down that room. It's going to be really hard uh, for Dallin Hayden to get in unless there was some type of injury to one of those two guys. So Dallin Hayden, definitely uh, a very talented running back, played kind of sparingly for Ohio State in the past couple of years, but is plenty talented, um, and t plenty of teams need running back help, as we just talked about. So they will definitely be looking out for this kid, and I, I think he will definitely find a Power 5 school to uh, call home for his next uh, place. But let's move right on here. Uh, Miles Slusher is a safety from uh, Colorado. This one is a little bit more interesting to me because, uh, at least in my eyes, he was in line to start next year. Now, I could be wrong about that. I'm not exactly sure how that was shaking out out there, but I assumed it was going to be him and Shiloh Sanders in the back end of that defense at safety, and it seems like it's not going to be Slusher at least. So I don't know if that's transfer portal kids coming in and uh, proving themselves early. I don't know if that's you know him just not being super happy about the situation in Colorado. Um, but whoever gets him is getting a big time player who's played a lot of football, which is always a great thing, especially for someone playing safety, right? You know, you need to be able to be kind of that security blanket over the entire defense and getting someone like him for whoever does, I, I think will be a really, really solid pickup um, might be a little bit more under the radar as we get more and more names in the portal, but definitely someone that uh, will have a big time market and Whoever gets them will be very happy they did. Um, and then finally, I wanted to highlight this, kind of just highlight this story. Um, Darian Brown is a running back that has been at Texas for quite some time. I believe he was in the 2018 uh, recruiting class, if I'm not mistaken. But he signed uh, with Texas out of Buford High School in Georgia before he suffered a stroke that cre uh, created a ton of medical problems that he had to go through. Um, and there were just insane amounts of hurdles for him to get over. Um, so it kind of came, his football career kind of came to a halt very quickly. Uh, he's been on a medical scholarship at Texas for the past couple of years, but he has now been cleared to play football again. So he is in the transfer portal um, just wanted to kind of highlight his story, hope he finds a home, hope he finds a place where he can get back on the field, be happy and healthy, and kind of just, uh, you know, live out the dream that he's been waiting just way too long uh, to be able to do. So really looking out for that kid, very excited to see where he ends up, because very, very talented. Coming out of high school, he's a four-star, going to Texas, Texas expected him to be one of their big time backs in the line of um, incredible amounts of big time backs, but uh, it didn't quite work out there. But hopefully, um, he finds his place and is able to play some college football this time next year. But um, those are some names just to kind of let you know where we're at right now. Now, that's the tip of the iceberg. I'll be totally honest with you. There is so much under the surface that is a lot scarier and a lot bigger. And uh, the names, I think there will be a couple where you look at your phone, see the name that is in the portal, and your jaw drops. I'm sure there will be a couple for me. I think there's just something we're just going to have to prepare ourselves for. Um, uh, it's one of those things that you got to hope that your team comes out the other side intact. You got to hope that um, you don't lose, you know, big time players uh, this time around. But there's going to be teams that do. There's going to be teams that have are right now. The head coach feels really good about their where their roster is at, where their team is at, and they won't in two weeks. Um, so it's going to be a weird time. There's going to be a ton of 
different things, you know, bouncing around and, and craziness. And I've said it a million times, but I'll say it a million and one. The transfer portal system just needs to be fixed. Now, the entity itself is not a bad entity. And people will try to tell you that it is. People will try to, um, you know, spin narratives against the transfer portal at all. It's an important thing to this sport. Now, the way it's being utilized, the way it's being um, put into action is not. Uh, about this sport and is not good for this sport it's definitely the detriment to the team the coaches the players and more importantly the sport in the short term I think all of this is going to be very 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 weird and uh, create a lot of confusion and a lot of anger around college football fans but at the end of the day um, I think this is something that might just be necessary Uh, it's something that we kind of need uh a big time moment to get everyone's attention that this is something that needs to be fixed. I talked yesterday that the NCA is thinking of getting rid of any limitations to transferring. So you can transfer as many times as you want, as long as you're academically eligible, you're good to go. Um, that is not something I love. Um, and definitely something that would create even more problems for this, but the amount of coaches that you will be here talking in coded language over the next month talking about other coaches stealing their players is going to be insane. The number of names bouncing around is going to be wild. There will be guys that jump in and then jump out to go to their old team. There will be guys that maybe commit to multiple teams in the 15-day window. Who knows? But good news for you all is you do not have to worry about all that because I am worrying about all that. So just tune in at I am Eastern every day and We will have all of that updated for you. If you can't tune in at 9 a.m. Eastern, obviously we will have the segments up on the YouTube right afterwards. So um, don't worry about trying to keep up with this. I will keep up with it for you. Just uh, watch the video and, you know, you'll be up to date. But um, to end this up, you know, buckle up because uh, it's going to be wild. But I like to think that we will find our way through this crazy storm. And uh, the sport might just be better long term because of it. But... We're going to take our first break here, and when we come back, we're going to talk about Caleb Williams. There's been a lot of criticism around him, uh, including one very recently. Uh, I think yesterday was really when it uh, kind of blew up. Um, So I'll speak on that and kind of uh, if I think, you know, those criticisms are fair. Uh, So stick with us right after, and we'll talk about that right after this.